Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. King Charles II of England wanted dead or alive and he is a tall black man. King Charles II King of England, Scotland and Ireland and he ruled from 1649 to 1685. King Charles II of England. He was wanted by his own government. And here's a proclamation made by Parliament as they was hunting the king down as if he was a common criminal. By the Parliament of the English government, a proclamation for the discovery and apprehending of Charles Stuart and other traitors, his adherents and abettors, whereas Charles Stuart, son to the late tyrant Charles I, with divers of the English and Scottish nation have lately in a traitorous and hostile manner with an army invaded this nation, England, which by the blessing of God upon the forces of this commonwealth have been defeated and many of the chief actors therein slain and taken prisoners. But... This said Charles Stewart is escaped for the speedy apprehending of such a malicious and dangerous traitor to the peace of this commonwealth. So this is basically an arrest warrant for the king by his own government. Charles II of England. Charles II was born the 29th of May, 1630, and he died on the 6th of February, 1685, was King of Scotland from 1649 until 1651, and King of England, Scotland, and Ireland from the 1660 restoration of the monarchy until his death in 1685. Charles II was the eldest surviving child of Charles I of England, Scotland, and Ireland, and Henrietta Maria of France. After Charles I's execution at Whitehall on the 30th of January, 1649, at the climax of the English Civil War, the Parliament of Scotland proclaimed Charles II King on the 5th of February, 1649. However, England entered the period known as the English Interregnum or the English Commonwealth with a government led by Oliver Cromwell. Cromwell defeated Charles II at the Battle of Worcester on the 3rd of September 1651 and Charles fled to mainland Europe. Cromwell became Lord Protector of England, Scotland, and Ireland. Charles spent the next nine years in exile in France, 
the Dutch Republic, and the Spanish Netherlands. The political crisis that followed Cromwell's death in 1658 resulted in the restoration of the monarchy, and Charles was invited to return to Britain on the 29th of May, 1660, his 31st day. He was received in London to public acclaim. After 1660, all legal documents stating a regnal year did so as if he had succeeded his father as king in 1649. The Battle of Worcester The Battle of Worcester took place on the 3rd of September 1651 in and around the city of Worcester, England. It was the last major battle of the 1639 to 1653 wars of the three kingdoms. A parliamentary army of around 28,000 under Oliver Cromwell defeated a largely Scottish royalist force of 16,000 led by Charles II of England. In the aftermath, about 3,000 men were killed during the battle, and a further 10,000 were taken prisoner at Worcester, or soon afterwards. The Earl of Derby was executed, while the other English prisoners were conscripted into the new model army and sent to Ireland. Around 8,000 Scottish prisoners were deported to New England, Bermuda, and the West Indies to work for landowners as indenture laborers or else to work on fin drainage. Around 1,200 Scotch prisoners were taken to London. Many died from disease and starvation at Toot Hill Fields and other makeshift prison camps. Parliamentary casualties numbered in the low hundreds. Cromwell's Crowning Mercy The Battle of Worcester, 1651 Book by Malcolm Atkin Chapter 10 The King's Escape Charles was in hiding for six weeks with a price of 1,000 pounds on his head. His escape would not be easy. Charles had distinctive looks. He was about six feet, two inches, and tall, which made him a giant of his time, and with a swarthy complexion from Italian blood in the French royal family, leading to the nickname Black Boy after the N sign. As a consequence, the parliamentary wanted posters, sought a tall black man over two yards high. He had a mass of black hair and heavy black eyebrows with a curling mouth that was described as large and ugly. Hiding such a figure was going to be difficult task, and it is remarkable how few people did actually recognize him whilst on the run. Physical descriptions of King Charles II included a tall black man, 
black boy, swarthy complexion. Charles was in hiding for six weeks with a price of 1,000 pounds on his head. His escape would not be easy. Charles had distinctive looks. He was about six feet, two inches tall, which made him a giant of his time and with a swarthy complexion from Italian blood in the French royal family, leading to the nickname Black Boy after the ensign. As a consequence, the parliamentary wanted posters sought a tall black man over two yards high. He had a mass of black hair and heavy black eyebrows with a curling mouth that was described as large and ugly. Hiding such a figure was going to be a difficult task and it is remarkable how few people did actually recognize him whilst on the run. The book When Scotland Was Jewish DNA evidence archaeology analysis of migrations and public and family records show 12th century Semitic roots by Elizabeth Cladwell Hirschman and Donald N. Yates. Were not other onlookers puzzled by the dark Semitic and Mediterranean appearances of the royal Stuart family? As cursory inspection will affirm, none of these prominent Scotsmen look typically Scottish. In fact, they appear rather dark and Semitic. Yet, here they are, Scottish aristocrats. The Scottish royal stewards were equally dark and Semitic in appearance. Of Charles II, dusky appearance of his mother, Queen Henrietta Maria, had been half mortified, writing after her confinement that the child was so dark, she was ashamed of him. He was quickly dubbed the black boy. Enemies made out that he was a black bastard, begotten by a black Scotsman. Charles' physical appearance Charles II, he's described as Dusky, the black boy, black bastard, son of a black Scotsman, and Semitic or Shemitic. The book, a two volume set by David McRitchie, Ancient and Modern Bretons. Therefore, when you have two kinds of people occupying one country for many centuries, the one living as peacefully as possible, encouraging industry and learning and religion and making laws to foster the growth of these, the other Continuing generation after generation to rob and murder at every opportunity. And when you know, as we do know with regard to Scotland, that the former party gained more and more century after century 
the direction of the government of that country. You cannot but see that the ultimate ascendancy of their ideas and laws denotes a racial victory. The average modern Briton would be somewhat non-post if he were acquired or if he were required to give the names of all his progenitors of the reign of Queen Anne and not one could produce a pedigree that would show to the satisfaction of critical antiquaries the name and race of every ancestor and ancestress living at the date of the Norman conquest. The limit might safely be placed some centuries nearer our own time, but the Norman conquest will do. And as for the question of complexion and physical traits, it is becoming more apparent every day that we are a mixed race. The British was a mixed race people. And so was Europe. Europe is mixed race. And so was Britain. Ancient and Modern Britons. A Retrospect. Published in London. 1884. David McRitchie was a Scotsman, born in the capital city of Scotland, Edinburgh. In this book, this two volume set was written in the year 1884. Author David McRitchie is making a statement. And at the same time, he's asking a question. The 17th century, the time of the English Civil War, the 17th century was undoubtedly too near our own time to be an era in which a dynastic or political movement also denoted a struggle between races. Two ethnic groups were fighting in the English Civil War. Although the historians must find it difficult to put down his finger on the exact date when racial feelings ceased to be an important factor in British politics, these two groups were at odds with each other throughout British history. And it would be impossible to show that the wares of the Lovelocks, the wares of the Lovelocks was the British aristocrats, Scottish aristocrats. They showed their kinship with the Native American Indians by wearing Lovelocks. The, the group that was not aristocratic in nature and origin did not wear Lovelocks and did not identify themselves as having kinship with Native American Indians. And it would be impossible to show that the wares of the Lovelocks were mostly men of swarthy complexion. The men who wore the Lovelocks, the British Scottish aristocrats, were men of mostly swarthy complexion. But when such of them as resembled Charles II in complexion, Charles II wore a love lock, just like his father before him, Charles I. It will be seen at a later page that there are some grounds for believing that the 17th century, the British, the English Civil War, the 17th century struggles were really, to some extent, perhaps to a considerable extent of a racial nature, two ethnic groups were fighting in the English Civil War. 
the two groups that were fighting in the English Civil War was the Cavaliers and the Roundheads. Just like Charles II was Semitic or Shemitic, the Cavaliers were Israelites, Semitic or Shemitic. And the Roundheads, their opponents were the children of Romans that lived in Britain but forgot their identity over time. The Cavaliers and the Roundheads, but this is about the Roundheads. They were supporters of Parliament and not of the king. They were country gentry, town dwelling manufacturers, and Puritan clergy. Called roundheads because of their hair style, the Cavaliers wore long hair, curled long hair. They were considered the underdogs in the war, and their leader was Oliver Cromwell. They were Romans, former serfs, but now the middle class. The Cavaliers were Israelites. The Roundheads were Romans. The Cavaliers, landholding aristocrats, versus the Roundheads, landholding merchants. And these two groups were the different factions fighting to control the English government during the English Civil War. It was a middle class coup d'etat against the aristocracy of Britain. Of the Roman Empire of Septimius Severus. Septimius Severus controlled Europe, North Africa, and the Near East. The Severus dynasty completed a coup d'etat against the native Romans. There were Carthaginians. Punics, Phoenicians, and Syrians who were Israelites. They took over the Roman Empire from the native Romans. The Romans lost the empire under the Severus dynasty. But the Romans were revived.